Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project and Magnetic Reversal News, bringing you a magnetic excursion update Thursday, July 31st, around 10 p.m. Mountain Time, 2025. The world's longest lightning strike has been confirmed. It crossed 515 miles from Texas to Kansas, and it occurred, well, quite a few years ago, back in October of 2017. The only problem is that the data from GOES satellite hadn't been uh, reviewed. And take a look at this reconstruction of said lightning bolt. Lots to talk about, including flooding rains in the east. So buckle up and keep calm. It's boom time. Storms drop dangerous flooding rain from D.C. to New York, inundating roads and snarling air travel. Torrential rainfall and flash flooding today slam the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast, wreaking havoc along the Interstate 95 corridor. This was another serious flood event in the summer that has been full of them. Heavy storms developed in the afternoon and lasted through the evening. Flash flood warnings were active in parts of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, Maryland, Virginia by mid-afternoon with more drenching storms to come. In Maryland and Pennsylvania, flooded roads and stranded vehicles were reported by the National Weather Service and local officials. In New York City, heavy rains halted traffic along the major east-west thoroughfares in Queens, east of Manhattan, and videos from the area show cars and semi-trucks stranded in the water. Here we can see some flooding there uh, on the Northern Boulevard and Bell Boulevard in Queens, New York. And more flooding rains happening in the next seven days. Take a look at this, five to seven inches in the dark blue regions along the coast from North Carolina south to North Florida. And a California harbor in Crescent City suffers close to a million dollars in damage from tsunami waves. This area had the largest tsunami waves anywhere on the west coast. Over four foot tsunami waves destroyed portions of a pier. And there were 2,000 lightning strikes hitting eastern Oregon after red flag warnings and fire weather watch warnings and fires have erupted. Firefighters are now tackling new blazes in the Cascade Range after thunderstorms spark fresh wildfires. And the Dragon Bravo fire explodes in size to become the 10th largest in Arizona history. The wildfire along the Grand Canyon's north rim has grown and is now considered a mega fire, having burned more than 105,000 acres. Holy macaroni. Let's take a look at some of the details. This morning about the Dragon Bravo fire. It is still burning and it is now growing even more. It's burned across more than 100,000 acres along the Grand Canyon's north rim. It's destroyed a lot of buildings as well. That's according to Watch Duty. So this blaze is officially considered now a mega fire since those flames have destroyed over 100,000 acres. 12 News journalist David Chazanov joins us live in the newsroom. So David, this fire continues. It just seems to get worse and worse. It seems like they got a hold on it yeah. and then all of a sudden they don't. So how much of it is it contained right now? Justin and Allison, good morning. Officials say it's just 4% contained. Experts actually now label it as the 10th largest wildfire in state history, roughly 14,000 acres behind the ninth worst in our state's history. And of course, this situation continues to develop, so new information continues to roll in. The latest incident report shows more than 1,000 firefighters are working to contain the flames. Nearly a week ago, around 26% of the fire was contained, but even though that number has since dropped to 4%, crews say they are not losing containment. The fire is just growing in size, making that percentage much smaller. The wildfire began on the north rim of the Grand Canyon after being sparked by lightning on the 4th of July. Federal officials chose to let it burn, similar to a prescribed burn, and this move actually prompted Governor Katie Hobbs, among other Arizona elected officials, to call for an investigation. Several buildings on the north rim of the Grand Canyon, including the historic Grand Canyon Lodge, are now destroyed. Sitting above the Dragon Bravo fire in ninth place on Arizona's largest wildfires list is the Willow Fire of 2004, which destroyed more than 119,000 acres near Payson. 
The largest wildfire in state history is still the Wallow Fire of 2011, burning over 538 thousand acres. Unfortunately, the Dragon Bravo fire doesn't look like it's going to be getting any easier for fire crews as Grand Canyon National Park currently faces an extreme heat warning through Sunday night around 7 p.m. And of course, we'll continue to keep an eye on official numbers as they roll in. Reporting live in the newsroom, David Chazanoff, 12 News, Today in AZ. So there you have it. And a quick look over here at the fire and smoke map version 4.2. We can see that fire is creating most of the smoke plume that is choking out the Great Plains and the Northern Plains there, as well as the Central and Northeast U.S. So we've got Canadian wildfires, we've got Western wildfires all converging, creating this bad air scenario. And, well, it doesn't look like any precipitation is coming to this region in maybe in 14 days. We could see some good stuff coming out there but we're going to have to wait and see. Tornado HQ Live showing six severe weather warnings in Wyoming, Montana, Colorado, the most recent issue, Adams County in Colorado, Powder in River County in Montana, and Sheridan in Wyoming. Severe thunderstorm warnings happening now. We've also got some special marine warnings here in the Delmarva. So check out tornadohq.com for live severe weather warnings. And now the full forecast. We've got thunderstorms and heavy rainfall in the mid-Atlantic and southern New England. Fire weather concerns in the west and bad air around the Great Lakes there. Take a look. Heavy rain and isolated severe thunderstorms may continue to bring flash and urban flooding to the northern mid-Atlantic and southern New England through tonight. Isolated dry thunderstorms will continue to bring fire weather threats to northwestern Great Basin through Friday. So keep those cigarette butts inside the vehicles. A quick look at total accumulated precipitation, and I'll show you that starting around August 12th and 13th here, we're going to be receiving some significant moisture, it looks like, in northern Arizona. That could really help with the Bravo fire. But until then, very sparse precipitation indeed. The flooding threat continues down on the coast, on the east coast, the southeast coast, where most of that flooding potential will happen over the next week. We'll take a quick look at the GFS model and walk it through day by day so you can see what type of severe weather is popping up. Here's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and then we're way out in the model. So late in the week, we could see something big exploding up here uh, in southern Canada. Why one of the world's biggest earthquakes wasn't followed by a monster tsunami? Well, because... The magnitude of the earthquake doesn't determine the magnitude of the tsunami. Tsunamis are caused by displacement on the sea floor. So even a smaller earthquake than the 8.8 .8 could have more displacement and create a catastrophic tsunami. So it's based on the displacement. Is it strike slip where there's no displacement and no tsunami or is it a thrust fault? Thrust faults will displace on the sea floor more and will cause the ocean to rift and cause a large tsunami to propagate. So there was not a lot of thrust on this fault, even though it was an 8.8. .8. So those are the facts. Also, Southern California has been shaken by multiple earthquakes a day after tsunami advisories. And there we can see the West Coast shaking, and we can see uh, aftershocks occurring in the region today. So hundreds of aftershocks happening after the 8.8. .8. And we've got an interesting quake happening up here in Pond Inlet, Canada, a 5.0 in the middle of nowhere there. So that's an interesting quake to report. And some activity up in Washington State, a 2.8 there, not associated with Rainier. But let's take a look over at the Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. So the seismic swarm at Rainier is quieting down, but still adding quake after quake. The largest earthquake swarm ever in modern history. Now 1,186 earthquakes this month, but you can see there have been some gaps and the activity has certainly slowed down. And that brings us to Worldwide Volcano News. Kluchiskyoi, the volcano that was triggered by the 8.8, .8, is no longer puffing and passing. We've got Dukono on the list. Kirishima, possible activity continuing there as well as Nevado de Ruiz, Merapi to 11,000 feet. 
Chivalouche to 12,000. Raventador, 14,000 foot blast. Barren Island on the list with a 7,000 foot puff today. Ibu to 7,000 as well. Sun Gay to 19,000. Ducono to 6,000. Nevada de Ruiz to 19,000. Raventador, 15,000 foot blast. Sporadic puffs at Santa Guito. Ongoing volcanic ash at San Gay. Ducono to 6,000, wrapping up worldwide volcano news for the day. And it's true, the world's longest lightning fat flash has been confirmed as a new record. A 515-mile-long lightning strike that traveled from Texas to Missouri has been confirmed as the new world record. And we have a simulation of the bolt in question right there. The World Meteorological Organization has confirmed that a 515-mile-long mega flash of lightning in 2017 is a new world record. The flash, a term for lightning inside a cloud that does not hit the ground, moved from northern Texas into Missouri and was part of a mesoscale collective system, which is a large complex of thunderstorms that occurred October 22nd in 2017. This new lightning flash ble beats the previous record of 477 miles set by a flash back on April 29th, 2020 and that ain't funny although the new lightning flash is older than the previous record holder it was only recently discovered and is one of the first mega flashes observed by noah's go 16 satellite which has made detailed information like this available to scientists for the last 10 years and there we go all the links will be below absolutely fascinating and like we said as the magnetosphere wanes and we dive deeper into this magnetic excursion lightning events like this will only get bigger and stronger and longer space weather for august 1st we've got a sliver coronal hole transequatorial facing earth it's tiny and i don't think it's plasma stream will budge the kp at all KP hovering down at two three day geomagnetic forecast is all quiet sunspots are just pricks and they are not that magnetically active because there is no flaring, kids. Cosmic rays could support life just under the ice. And we're talking about Enceladus and other icy moons. A team of researchers led by Dimitra Atri at New York's University campus in Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi, Abu Dhabi, looked at the process of radiolysis, which occurs when cosmic rays slam into water ice. The high-speed particles break water molecules apart, which releases electrons, and some bacteria here on Earth use that for energy. Could the same things be happening to possible life forms on icy worlds out of our solar system? That is the question. And is it all connected? Panspermia, life on Earth, cosmic rays, life on Enceladus. Is life ubiquitous in the universe? Lee and I will break it all down Saturday on our radio show where we dive deep into the idea of panspermia. A 2,500-year-old Siberian ice mummy had intricate tattoos and images reveal, well, they're fantastic. Take a look at this. This is an illustration of the tattoo on the woman's right forearm, which shows two large reindeer, elk, caribou being eaten by leopards and lions. And tigers, oh my. And another shot here. This is a tattoo on the woman's left forearm, which is like some type of predatory bird animal eating a moose. Absolutely fantastic. We'll link everything below. And here's an actual picture of the skin. Real creepy. See how it's sewed up there? If it wasn't obvious to you, it was for me, and I've told many people this, potatoes evolved from tomatoes. And they're the same family of plants, which is weird. One grows this red fruit above, and another grows tubers below. But it's only been revealed that this hybridization of the tomato plant into potatoes occurred naturally about 9 million years ago helping spark the emergence of tuber-bearing species, Solanum tuberosum. So that's absolutely fantastic. Wild tomatoes, which grew in the Andes, crossed with a plant called E. tuberosum. 
And through a process called hybridization, they mix their genetic material to form an entirely, entirely new lineage. Tomato is the mother of E. tuberosum, is the father. So this is absolutely fantastic. Above the ground, potato plants look almost identical to E. tuberosum, but pull them up and the difference is clear. E. tuberosum has thin underground stems and none of the starchy potato tubers that make them a global food staple. So, fascinating plant science uh, will be linked below. More interesting news on the plant science front. Bayer, who has been killing people for hundreds of years, submits novel herbicide for regulatory approval in the U.S. and Canada to replace toxic and poisonous glyphosate. Are they actually moving forward with a safer type of herbicide? Well, it's anyone's guess because no one really has any info on icalphalin methyl, the new herbicide, because it's all been hidden by Bayer. So what say you? Should we be spraying icalphalin methyl on all of our food crops? Well, I don't think so. We don't spray anything on our fruits and vegetables here, and they do just fine. Who's not doing fine is the amusement parks in Saudi Arabia. Take a look. And we do not recommend... <laughs> Yeah, I, I would just stay away. And that's a boom to knowledge. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and be safe. We love you. And that is a boom. <laughs> subscribe now and hit the notification bell to not be notified. <laughs>